All right, good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Je Jesse Gabriel, proud to represent the West San Fernando Valley in the California State Legislature. Also proud to chair the Assembly Committee on Privacy and Consumer Protection, and pleased to be joined this morning uh, by a number of my colleagues, uh, Assemblywoman Buffy Wicks, Assemblymember Jordan Cunningham, Assemblymember Chris Ward, some of the most thoughtful and effective leaders on addressing issues on social media and protecting our kids and vulnerable communities online. And we are also delighted to be joined this morning by a number of incredible advocates who have been standing up for our communities. We are here this morning because California stands on the precipice of enacting two new laws to regulate big tech. Laws that would help to make the internet safer and better protect our kids and our most vulnerable communities online. We're also here to call on the legislature and the governor to pass these laws to prioritize our kids and vulnerable communities over the profits of technology companies. I'm going to speak this morning about AB 587, the Social Media Transparency and Accountability Act. Assemblywoman Wicks is going to speak about AB 2273, the Age Appropriate Design Code. Uh, and then Assemblymember Cunningham, who is an author of both bills, will share comments as well. We are here today because the online world has created tremendous opportunities, but also real and proximate threats to our kids, to vulnerable communities, and to American democracy as we know it. Addressing these threats is difficult from a legal and a technical standpoint, but thank, thanks to the hard work of advocates and community leaders, California is poised to take a major step forward in addressing the harms of social media. And I want to share two observations about this. First is that we believe that California has a special obligation and a special opportunity to lead on these issues. In California, we are proud of our innovation ecosystem, we're proud of our technology economy, and we know that many of the companies that these bills would regulate are homegrown California companies. But with this function in Washington, D.C., we believe that California must, must step up and lead. And as we have been working on these efforts, in many instances, we have been at odds with the major technology companies. And it's no secret that these companies wield tremendous influence in Sacramento. But we believe this is a pivotal moment for our legislature and our governor to stand with kids and families and not with big tech. The other common denominator here for all of the, for all of the legislators here is that we're parents. We are parents concerned about our kids. And Assemblymember Cunningham in particular has spoken so powerfully in the legislature about his personal experiences, about his concerns about protecting his four kids. And it is those personal experiences that has led us to move forward on these efforts because this protecting kids is not and should not be a partisan issue. With respect to AB 587, this bill seeks to address the incredible power of social media to shape our national conversation. More specifically, the bill seeks to address concerns that social media platforms are enabling the spread of hate, racism, extremists, violence, and conspiracy theories, often with deadly consequences. A 2016 internal report by Facebook found that 64% of people who joined an extremist group on Facebook did so only because the company's own algorithm recommended it to them. And the consequences of that could not be more clear. Consider the recent mass shootings we've had in this country. One of the themes, they were radicalized, often with a toxic brew of white supremacy and extremist ideology through the incredible power of social media. In short, Social media has too often become rocket fuel for hate, a powerful contributor to our national epidemic of violence. And predictably, the victims of hate and harassment on social media are, most, are disproportionately our most vulnerable communities. Women, people of color, members of the LGBTQ community, Jews and other religious minorities, and immigrants. And social media platforms aren't doing enough to address their role in promoting online hate and fueling dangerous conspiracy theories. We heard this from the Facebook whistleblower, Frances Haugen, in her congressional testimony, when she explained with clarity how Facebook knowingly leveraged its platform to prioritize profits over its civic responsibilities. We've seen studies have confirmed that, face, that, that social media has played a major role in spreading public health disinformation. We've seen a study that said that there are 12 people and their associated organizations were responsible for 65% of vaccine misinformation online. This is misinformation that has been directly linked to vaccine hesitancy and refusal. And that's why we are calling today for the passage of Assembly Bill 587, the Social Media Transparency and Accountability Act of 2022, which would, for the first time ever, require major social media companies to publicly disclose their content moderation policies and report key data about how they enforce those policies. 
Our message today is simple. The public deserves basic transparency and accountability from big tech. It's time for social media companies to step out of the shadows and come clean about shape how they are shaping public discourse. Simply put, we are calling on the governor and the legislature to prioritize protecting our kids and protecting our communities because they should come first and before the pr profits of big tech companies. One final observation. Nothing in this bill requires companies to censor speech. It doesn't require them to have any particular content moderation policy. It simply requires them to be honest about when they are amplifying certain voices and silencing others. We think that that's a fair thing to ask, and we believe that this is an important step forward, an important first step in protecting our kids and addressing the spread of extremism, hate, and misinformation online. And with that, I am most privileged to introduce my incredible colleague, someone who has been uh, such a champion uh, for women, for families, for kids, and particularly a leader on this issue, uh, Assemblywoman Buffy Wicks. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chair Gabriel. I want to thank my colleagues for all their work in this space. I want to thank our Chair of Privacy Committee, Jesse Gabriel, who has just been, as you can tell, uh, a fighter, an eloquent fighter on this issue, um, and is really um, pushing the envelope here in California to ensure we are protecting our kids. I want to thank Assemblymember Chris Ward for his continued advocacy and leadership in this space. He's one of our newer members, but we're so proud to have him here with us. And I want to thank Assemblymember Jordan Cunningham, who is a joint author on my bill, AB uh, 2273. And Jordan uh, is a Republican. You know, we have them in California, actually. <laughs> and he's been one of the brightest stars on this issue. And he's worked so um, passionately to protect our kids, working with the chair and myself and others. And uh, he's leaving us uh, in the assembly. We're going to miss him. Um, but we're so honored to have him here with us. Uh, you know, I, I come to this issue really as a mom. And I'm actually wearing my bracelet my five-year-old made for me called Mama. And I wear it when we have big legislative days. I wore it yesterday when we passed AB 2011. Uh, and we passed AB 2273. Uh, and so these are big, important bills for me. And I think about her and I think about my, my two kids. I have a two-year-old and a five-year-old. And I really do these bills selfishly <laughs> because I know that when they're seven, eight, 10, 15, as they start engaging more in the digital world, I want to make sure that we have set up the right tools to make sure that they have the guardrails. We know that they're going to be digital natives. And we, we welcome that, right? It's a modern era. As, as uh, Assemblymember Gabriel said, California is home to the tech innovation space. And we welcome that and all that that brings. We also want to make sure our children are safe. And right now, they are not safe. And you will hear from Emmy, who's going to speak later. And she's going to talk about her own personal experience as to why these bills are so important. But I do view as legislators our fundamental job is to keep our community safe above anything else. And most importantly, our children. And so that is why I'm proud to author AB 2273. And basically, you know, here in California, we like to say that, you know, uh, as California goes, so goes the nation. And it's my hope that as California goes, so goes the nation on this bill and the other bills that are being discussed today. But I will tell you, we borrowed this idea from the UK because they already passed the age appropriate design code in the UK. And it has put forth many protections for children and those under 18 in the United Kingdom. For instance, Google has made safe search its default browsing mode for anyone under the age of 18. YouTube has turned off autoplay for those users under the age of 18. TikTok and Instagram have disabled direct messaging between children and adults they don't follow. Uh, TikTok does not uh, put forth push notifications after a certain time period. So a lot of these things sound like small things, but they're actually very important to the ecosystem that our children are living in. Our children are getting bombarded with information online. And they don't yet have the capacities to understand all that information coming at them. And so what we want to make sure is that when these products are created, they are by design and by default safe for our children. I'm thrilled that we had bipartisan support on this bill in both the Assembly and the Senate. I truly believe Governor Newsom will sign this bill because I know what his values are, but I want to be explicit in asking him to sign AB 2273 and make sure our children are safe. Our children deserve it. 
I'm honored to be here uh, along with Five Rights, who is the sponsor um, of this bill, who's done tremendous work in this space, as well as Parents Together, and the thousands of teens speaking up in support for this type of bill. And with that, I'm proud to introduce my colleague, Assemblymember Jordan Cunningham. Thank you. You know, certain issues, I believe, transcend politics and they transcend partisanship. And keeping kids safe online is foremost among them. And we have to get this right. California has to get this right because we need to lead the nation. We need to show DC how things can get done and kids can be protected. We need to show our parents, our voters, our kids, our constituents that we stand for them. And these two bills are critical. It's critical that they pass. It's critical that the governor sign them into law. And we will take a giant leap forward in terms of the social media tech space by having these bills enacted. And we can't get it wrong. It's too important to get wrong. These, these technology companies have unleashed amazing things, connected people in ways they've never been connected, ever. But there's also risks there. And we can have it all. We can have technology that's safe for kids. We can have space where they're transparent about what's going on with respect to content editing. These are not big things to ask the tech companies to step up and do, but they're necessary things for our kids. I want to live in a world, I have three teenagers and a second grader. My wife and I fight a constant battle against screen time. And I can tell you as a parent, you have no chance. Under the status quo, you have no chance. There is stuff running in the background. There's stuff influencing your kids' minds, the very development of their brain that you have no ability to control. Most parents are not software engineers. Most parents have no capacity to counteract what's being done online. And we all want to protect our kids. With these two bills, we can level the playing field. And, and that's better for everybody. And I would contend that's better for tech. It's better that they have products that they can offer to everybody, under 18, over 18, anybody that would like to use them, and parents can trust, which they currently cannot, but parents should be able to trust that if they let their kids download Snapchat, get on YouTube, whatever it is, that that, that platform is going to be safe for their kids. That they're not going to be connected to some extremist group. That they're not going to be algorith algorithmically sorted into some sort of weird space. And I can tell you as a former prosecutor, there are predators out there. And they use these tools to try to get at children. And it is not right. And it is time for the tech companies to step up. And it's time for lawmakers, as these courageous people behind me uh, are leading the way, it's time for us to put in guardrails. And I want to thank Buffy. I want to thank Chris. And I want to thank Jesse. They are courageous legislators. And they are thoughtful legislators. And these bills have been crafted and fought for and advocated for. And they are very, very fine pieces of legislation. I am proud put my name on them and I, I'm calling on as they have the legislature to pass them and the governor to sign them. Let's keep our kids safe online. Thank you. Thank you so much, Assemblymember Cunningham. And as, uh, as uh, Assemblymember Wicks mentioned, Jordan is just an incredible voice in this legislature and he's going to be deeply missed, just a really principled person. And it's really thanks to his effort that both of these bills uh, have passed both houses of the legislature with bipartisan support. And we think that that's so important because these should not be partisan issues. Protecting our kids, protecting vulnerable communities, regulating big tech, those, those are issues where we can find bipartisan consensus. And I also want to thank Assemblymember Ward for his leadership, courageous leadership on these issues. Uh, I know that from conversations with him uh, and my other colleagues up here, what has brought us together is the fact that we're parents. Between the four of us, we got 11 kids. Uh, and we represent four very different communities uh, in four very different parts of the state. But the common theme here is the concern that we have for those kids. The wonderful opportunities that tech and social media present, but also the dangers that are out there lurking. And how do we, as policymakers who are responsible, as Buffy said, for protecting our kids first and foremost, for protecting our communities first and foremost, this is part of the answer to that. And this is an important first step. And that's why we are asking the governor to sign these two bills into law. Now my privilege to introduce the uh, sponsor of AB 587, uh, which is the Anti-Defamation League, has been at the forefront of combating bigotry and hate against not only the Jewish community, but against all marginalized communities, has done incredible work in the online space, and we are so privileged to have with them today uh, a good friend of mine, their regional director of the Los Angeles office, Jeffrey Abrams. 
Thank you very much, Jesse, and good morning, everyone. My name is Jeffrey Abrams, and I serve as the Regional Director of ADL's Los Angeles office. It's a pleasure to be here today to support AB 587. Just two months ago, I stood right here at the Capitol alongside my colleagues presenting ADL's annual online hate and harassment report. The numbers painted a dark picture of how marginalized communities experience hate online. It showed shocking levels of hate that are permeating big social media platforms. So today, I'm back. I'm back to demand that our elected officials take action to bring some light to the darkness. I'm asking Governor Newsom to sign AB 587. ADL, as Assembly Member Gabriel mentioned, is proud to be a key supporter of AB 587 which serves as a foundational approach to bring to light the real issue of hate online. It's truly a bipartisan bill with the support not only of legislators in a bipartisan manner, but more than 90 community organizations across our state. If passed, when passed, AB 587 will require big social media platforms to be more transparent in the reporting and content moderation policies essential actions to mitigating the spread of hate, misinformation, disinformation, racism, and violence online. This has been a long and challenging process, starting all the way back to January 2021. We're grateful for Assemblymember Gabriel's commitment to see this through and for having the courage to stand up to the big social media platforms and showing us what true leadership looks like. Big tech's powerful lobbyists tried to stop us. They continue to try to stop us, but we didn't back down. It's time for big social media to stop hiding the hate. And so I end with a challenge to all of our elected officials. If not now, when? When will we be able to understand how pervasive this problem is? When will we hold big social media platforms accountable? When will we take action to protect our children? California has a chance to lead the way yet again. We call on our legislators and we call on Governor, Governor Newsom. Pass this bill and sign this bill, making it law. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jeff, for those powerful comments. It's now my pleasure to invite up uh, Dahlia Hashad, the uh, Online Safety Director of Parents Together. Hi, everyone. I'm Dahlia Hashad. I work with a national organization called Parents Together. We have millions of members in California and um, across the nation. And for the past several years, I have been working directly with parents, talking to them about what they're experiencing in their households, what's happening in their families as a result of their kids being online. And whether they have toddlers or whether they have teenagers, Every parent tells the same basic story. They, no matter what they do, no matter what kind of apps they put on their kids' phones, on their phones, they can't keep their kids safe online. And right now, kids are spending an unprecedented amount of time online. 46% of teenagers say that they are online nearly all of their waking hours. One out of every four teens says that they are on TikTok or Snapchat almost constantly throughout the day. And they're doing it on platforms that have not been designed for them, not been designed for their safety. And what we're seeing instead is we're seeing unprecedented rates of anxiety in kids, unprecedented rates of depression, suicidal ideation, exposure to predators, and other dangerous content. And what the tech companies want to say is that it's parents' fault and it's parents' responsibilities. But you can't put a seatbelt in a defective car and say it's safe to ride in. And so now with everything for kids moving online from school to socialization, we need tech companies who have proven that they won't do it on their own to be regulated we need them to be forced to keep our kids safe and design with our kids in mind. 
And that's why for parents, this bill is a prayer answered. And we call on Governor Newsom to sign it. This is the first step in many steps that we need to take across the nation and across the world to keep our kids safe. Kids are literally dying. We have a list of over a thousand parents who have had kids die because tech is not safe for them. And it's time that ends. It's time that we call on Governor Newsom and all of our elected officials to force big tech to do what they won't do on their own and to make tech safe for kids. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm now pleased to invite up Linda Eng, the president of OCA Asian Pacific American Advocates. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Assembly Member Gabriel, for this uh, invitation, and member of the press. My name is Linda Ng, National President of OCA, Asian Pacific American Advocates. OCA is a national civil rights organization headquarters in Washington, D.C., with over 50 chapters and affiliates across the country. We are dedicated to advancing the social, political, and economic well-being of Asian, American, and Pacific Islanders. It is a pleasure to be here. I am here because Asian Americans and Pacific Islander communities are tired. We are tired of the lack of regulations and enforcement of hate on big social media and platforms. Last year, a Stop AAPI Hate report found that eight out of 10 Asian Americans reported being bullied or verbally harassed. In fact, according to our friends at ADL, AAPIs have experienced the largest jump of harassment online from 21% in 2020 to 39% in 2021. That is alarming, but we already knew that. We live it every day when API women are sent sexually harassing messages through social media app. We live it every day when we're told to go back to our communities in chat rooms. We live it every day when intentionally divisive articles are exemplified saying that COVID-19 is an Asian disease. That's why I'm here today to call on the California State Senate to pass AB 587. This bill is critical to understanding the scope of the issue, allowing us to take better action. Our elected officials have a responsibility to take care of our community. We don't want words. We want action. OCA is proud to support AB 587 as a fundamental step in the right direction and urge the Senate to move it forward. Anything less is a disservice to our AAPI communities. Our communities continue to live in fear and it's important to hold social media companies accountable. So it's time to take action. Let's get this done. Let's pass AB 587. Thank you. Thank you so much, Linda. Linda is the ultimate proof that your height has nothing to do with your power. So we are very delighted to have her support. And it's now my uh, great pleasure to introduce Emmy Kim, a youth advocate and the director of legislative efforts for the Log Off Movement. Thank you so much to all the assembly members here that have invited me. It is an incredible honor to be standing alongside them. My name is Emmy Kim. I work under the Log Off Movement. The Log Off Movement is a youth organization made by teens for teens to promote the better and safer usage of social media. I can say this with great certainty that I am the only person standing here that has grown up with a phone in my hand. I am 18 years old, I started college yesterday, and I'm now standing here to fight for what's right. I got a phone when I was in the sixth grade, I downloaded Instagram shortly after, 
and across the few months that I had it the very first time, I found my classmates taking pictures of my of me in the hallways and posting them online, deciding that it is okay to post those photos and continuously call me fat, to say that my eyes when I smile look like macaroons, that when I was eating a macaroon during lunch that I was being a cannibal. It's this kind of behavior that is absolutely not okay. Short five years later, I'm standing here as one of the leaders in this movement. If you had told 13 year old me that I would be in any sort of position like this, I would have laughed in your face and told you that you were lying. Because people on social media and these platforms had convinced me that I will be nothing more than just a fat girl. I am here to prove that not only am I a fat girl, but I am an intelligent woman, that I am a powerful woman and I'm a woman that deserves to be respected. That my Asian-ness is not an excuse to push aside my accomplishments. But this realization came with so much struggle and it's a struggle that I still stand with today. Things that social media companies are doing is absolutely not all right. I receive emails, messages every single day from another teenager somewhere on this earth that tells me that social media is the core reason why they want to kill themselves. That should not be allowed. You don't allow your children on a bike without a helmet. You don't allow a baby in a kitchen without cabinet locks. You should not allow children on a platform that drives them to want to kill themselves. Safety, safety parameters exist on everything that kids touch except social media. Social media was not designed for children, it was designed for adults. It's now time you design it for us. I am here to call for the governor to sign this bill, to thank everyone here that has worked so hard to help make this possible. Along, I wanna thank all of the assembly members. I wanna thank Five Rights who has given me countless opportunities. I wanna thank everyone at Log Off, everyone at Parents Together. There are so many people that I want to thank, but more importantly, I wanna take this opportunity to tell all the kids at home that you're allowed to be loud, that your voice is not one to be silenced, and that you are forever more valuable than someone on social media will tell you. I am standing here for you. I am representing you as a fellow young person. Adults, do something right, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emmy, for that extremely powerful um, testimony. Uh, I think as you can see here today, um, what we're asking is very simple. We're asking our colleagues in the legislature, Democrats and Republicans, we're asking the governor of the state of California, stand with our communities. Stand with parents, stand with young people, stand with communities targeted by hate, stand with us and not with the big social media companies. Prioritize people over profits. And that is our message. We are asking our colleagues to pass these bills. They have both passed the Senate with bipartisan support. They are back in the assembly today on concurrence for a final vote. We're hopeful that they will get out and we are asking our governor to please stand with our communities, to please stand with parents across the state, and most importantly, to stand with our kids and sign these bills into law. And as Buffy said, at, so goes, as goes California, so goes the nation. If we can take this big step forward in the state of California, the home of these social media companies, the birthplace of the innovation economy, the birthplace of so many of these iconic tech companies, that will send a message not only to policymakers in Washington, D.C., but also around the world. And we are hopeful that that will be done today and that this will be an important first step in protecting our communities and protecting our kids online. Thank you and happy to take any questions. Yeah, so essentially it is giving guardrails to our new re uh, privacy regulatory agency to create um, regulations for any products that children use, um, to create them by design and by default uh, for kids in mind. Uh, and it's not just products that are already created for kids like 
the PBS Kids app. It's also things like Google because kids go on to Google. <laughs> Uh, and so it's ensuring that um, these products are created by design and by default. And it's again, it's modeled after the UK regulation. Uh, so you mentioned the... Yeah, the age appropriate design code in the UK is, uh, is what we modeled it after here. So it's a great question, um, and I'll answer it in two ways. One is that um, we, we believe, and I'm going to ask uh, some of our wicks to come up here too. Um, first of all, some of what we're asking to do, the transparency that would be required if AB 587 were signed into law, those reports would become public, this information would become public, it would be available to policymakers in Washington, D.C., and in foreign capitals across the world, and in state capitals across this country. I will also be honest about the fact that um, big tech companies have fought us every step of the way. And part of what they've said to us in our conversations with them, and we've sought to have, you know, understand where they're coming from and accommodate them where we can, is that they believe that whatever we do will automatically and instantaneously become a model for other states. And so we had long conversations, for example, about what the appropriate defin of social, definition of social media platform should be. And what we heard from the tech companies in conversations with them is that their, their view was that as soon as California adopted that definition, a uniform definition that would be put in multiple pieces of legislation, that folks in state capitals across the country would look to that. And we have seen this time and time again when California steps up and does this. Um, other other um, states and other countries, frankly, look at what we're doing. So we believe not only will this have uh, impacts and protect people here in the state of California, but we believe it will have national and, and international impacts as well. And I want to ask Buffy to add to that. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, it is my absolute hope that um, if this bill gets signed into law, that it will become effectively the law of the land and that could happen through numerous ways. One, other states could replicate it. And because this is a bipartisan measure, uh, I think it has great success and great chance of that happening. It could be actually implemented in Washington, D.C., passed in D.C. and signed into law federally, uh, which would be great. Or uh, the third most, I think, quickest option is that the companies will have to adhere to this floor of regulation here, so they're going to put that, uh, implement that across the globe. Because if you're, if you're Facebook or if you're, you know, say Google, would you have a different set of regulations for kids in California than you would in Nevada? No, you would just create a standard that you would adhere to across the board. So it's our hope that this will be um, replicated through any numerous ways. All right, everybody, thank you very much. We appreciate the attention. Hope everybody has a good day. Stay cool.